Hi, hey, welcome. We're going to be covering how we can make element selections. There's a number of different methods to select elements, and they're going to be returning back either the elements as an HTML collection or as a node list. So we're going to be looking at the get element by ID, which just selects a single matching element. The next one is going to be the get elements by class name. So it's going to select all of the elements with the particular class name. All of the elements with the tag name can be done with get elements by tag name, and we're going to be outputting those results and these are going to be within an HTML collection so that way we can make a loop through and output the results. We're also going to be making selections using the query selector which is going to return back the first matching result. Query selector all which is going to return back a node list of elements. We can use the array methods like for each and iterate through each one of the elements updating the content of the page. Go ahead and create an HTML file, add in some page elements, make sure that you do have a tag as well as one element with a class and then one element with an ID and we'll be making a selection of these elements. In the JavaScript code, open up the JS file and within the JS file, we're gonna type document write. And what document write does is it's a method that allows us to write content directly within the web page. And within the document write, I'm going to type the word one. And then I'm also going to use the document write and I'll also type the word two. So let's save that. And when we look within the web page, we get the content being written. So notice that there's no structure, there's no page elements. We haven't included anything. And when we go into the body, this has just been added to the end of the HTML code that we had. So just after the JavaScript file, this is where it's writing in the content. So if we were to move the JavaScript file above the H1, that's going to change the placement of the words that we're writing into the web page. Now this is one way that you can write content into your web page. And although it works, it's not a very efficient way of writing content because what if you want to have JavaScript code or updated content before certain page elements or after other page elements with using the document write, you would need to include a script file in each one of the cases where you want the JavaScript to write code into the web page as the web page is being rendered out. So what happened here is that as the HTML page loads, it loads all the page elements, it encounters the JavaScript, when the JavaScript line of code tells it to write, it writes at that point out to the web page. And this is why we use the element selection in order to select page elements to be able to make updates to them and to manipulate them. So let's take a look at different ways that we can select page elements. And one of the ways is to select it by its ID. We know that within HTML, when we do use the ID attribute, that we use it on a single element that's going to contain the ID attribute. So in this case, we do have a page element with the ID of one. So we'll make a selection of that and using the document and then the get element by ID method and selecting the ID value that we're selecting from the web page. So when we use that, we can output that into the console. And what this does is this gives us a way to refer to the page element. So outputting the page element, that gives us this page element here. And as we saw in the earlier lesson, we can update the inner HTML. So in this case, let's type the H1 and just type the word test and save that. So now whenever it encounters the page selection, when it encounters the statement, it makes a selection of the element on the page with the ID of one. It selects that page element within an object format, and then now we're applying the property value of inner HTML to it, and that's where we're getting the output of test. The element with the, the div with the ID of one now has the content of H1 test contained within it. In this way as well, if we want to make some updates to it, we can once again use the element and make an update to it and we want to write new to it. So whatever the last statement is, whatever the last update to it, that's the one that's going to show on the page. So the page loads, reads through the JavaScript, makes the updates to the selected page element. One of the better ways to do this is to assign this to a variable name and that way when we're referencing the page element, as this is going to be an object, we can reference that object using the variable name. 
So let's create an element. We'll call it one elements. And here we're going to be assigning the document get element by ID to the variable one element. And now in order to select and update the property values, we can then always refer to it and it makes the code more readable. When we want to make updates to it, we refer to it as the variable name. And the result is going to be the same. The code is going to be easier to read. Let's make some more selections to the page elements going to the HTML. We also have a class. So we have a class with the name of output. So we'll make a selection of that and I'll call this output one. And then using the document object, this time we want to select an element with the class. So we're going to get the elements by class name. And we know with HTML that classes can be used more than once. So unlike the ID, and in case you do use the ID more than once, it will select the first instance of that uh, value of the element that gets returned with the ID of one. But in this case, we can might have more than one element with a class of output, and that's why this is plural. So let's select the element with a class of output. And for now, we're going to output that into the console, and then we'll try to we'll check out what it outputs into the console, what's called an HTML collection. And an HTML collection is a collection of elements, and we can access the collection using the name, the ID, or the value of the element. So the collection is live, and it does not include any text nodes that might be available. So this is going to be slightly different than the node lists, which we are also going to be looking at in this lesson. HTML collection, it does have a length property, and we can also use the index value in order to select the element using the index value. The indexes are just like arrays where the first item is going to have an index value of zero. So this is going to be referring to the first result. If we had more elements that had a class of output, all of these elements would also be listed within the HTML collection, and they would all have different index values that we can make the selection of those elements using the index values. So even though it looks like an array, it's not an array, so you can't use your typical array methods. The for each method won't be available, but if you do want to loop through it, you can use the length value. So you can select it using the for, let the value of i to zero because that's going to be the starting value, and then loop through while the value of i is less than the output one length value. You can use the length property in order to loop through all of the elements within the HTML collection, selecting the elements, and I'm going to output them each within the console log, and we'll use output one and then i to represent the index that we are selecting. So that gives us each one of the elements, and just as we saw where we can select and update the inner HTML of that element, we can do the same here as we're iterating through them. We've got the element selected using its index value, and we can assign new values to it. So in this case, as we're looping through, I'll update the value of each one of those and setting it using the backticks. So template literals will use the value of i in order to output a new value into the web page. So that's going to be i and just representing its index value. And once we save that, now each one of those elements as we loop through is going to have the output of the value of its index being added into the HTML. Let's take a look at another way to make a selection. So we've got a number of different tags and there's a number of different elements that have a tag of div. So we can make a selection of the elements using their tag names. So selecting all of the divs and that's going to be using the document and getting elements by the tag name. And there's a number of ways to make these selections. So once again, this is plural. We're getting elements by the tag name and this is going to be selecting the elements using their tag name and output all of those into the console so we can see what the result is for that. And that's also going to be an HTML collection. So just as the elements by class name, we can use the tag name and then that gives us an HTML collection. There's also other ways to make selection of the elements. 
and using the query selector this is going to be similar to how you select elements when you're selecting them with CSS. Make a selection of the element. I'm going to give it a name of L and we'll just call it L1. We're making a selection using the document and this time the query selector method. And this does work similar to the way that we make selections using CSS. It is expecting a string value within it. And then within the string value, if we want to select the element by ID, we want to select the element with the ID of one. We use the hash just as we do with the styling in order to select elements by their ID. And then this way we can select the element and that's going to output the element into the console when we're referencing it to the variable name. You can also select it by its class. So we'll select an element by the class of output and save that. And this is going to return back the first matching result. So in this case, it's going to return back this element that we've got with an index value of zero. Select it by its tag name. And the tag name, just like the CSS, we don't have to include how we're making the selection. So if we want to select the element with an H1, that's going to refer to the first matching result with the H1 when we're making the request. You can also select multiple elements using the query selector all. So let's give you a few examples of those. Instead of query selector, we're going to do the query selector all. I'll just pluralize these and do the query selector all. So the structure is going to be the same, although it's going to be returning back a list of elements. And this is what's known as a node list. So this one initially does have the same look and feel as we do where we've got the length as the HTML collection and then each one of the elements does have its have its index value. So go ahead and we'll copy the for loop that we had for the original element with the output and we'll select the elements and I'll update this to div so that will give us a number of different elements. So returning back the all of the elements that are matching and we can get rid of that console output as well. So now within the page every one of the divs is going to now have the HTML as div with its index value where it falls on the page. So within the node list, there's also an, a way to loop through them using the for each method. So this is the method that you would be using for a typical array. So that gives us access to array methods such as for each. And this way we can loop through each one of the elements, select the element, and we'll update the inner HTML of the element and have a different content in there. And within the for each, we can get the index value. So we can use that index value as a value that we can use within the code. So referencing the element under the variable of E and then updating the inner HTML to represent its index value. So when we save that, now we're getting a cleaner way to loop through the contents using the node list where we can use the array methods and this gives us a way to reference the element and make updates to the properties of the element when we make the selection. And this is all done using the query selector all where we're creating that node list loop through the node list contents. And that's just one of the differences between the HTML collection, the node lists, and we're going to be covering more on this in the upcoming lessons. So go ahead and create an HTML file make a selection of your page elements in the various methods that we've covered in this lesson, and you can be ready to move on to the next lesson.